Hello guys and welcome to another project order series video. Today we're going to be solving problem 35, circular primes. The number 197 is called a circular prime because all rotations of the digits 197, 971, and 719 are themselves primes. There are 13 such primes below 100. How many circular primes are there below 1 million? So I've shown you guys how to figure out if a number is prime or not. However, for this problem, it would be nice if we can generate a range of prime numbers. And there's actually an algorithm for doing that. It's called sleeve of Eratosthenes. So this algorithm works by canceling factors of numbers that are already primes, all right, or multiples of numbers that are already prime. So if we have two as a prime number, then we're gonna go ahead and cancel out four, cancel six, cancel eight, and all the multiples of two. And for three, you're gonna cancel six and all the multiples of three. Okay, so that's how it actually works. So there is actually a Wikipedia article that shows you guys how that works. So you can see here, it crosses out everything for two, and then when it moves to three, it crosses out everything for three, right? And I will be building the algorithm from this, right? Actually, the two is that you can actually implement this. Uh, one of them actually yields prime numbers all the way to about 43,000 or something like that. And this one yields uh, prime numbers all the way to about 10 million. Okay. And it it will generate these numbers based on a specific range that we give it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and include the link for this in the video description. So let's get started. I've gone ahead and created a class called Circular Primes, all right? And in this tutorial, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and introduce functional programming because that's one of the features that Java um, implemented as of Java uh, 1.8, and we're in Java 11 now, all right? So this is probably an old topic, and probably all of you guys have used it before. But typically, I only use this when I'm working on my own projects, not when I'm doing a particular question. I want to just get these questions done as quick as possible, so I typically don't use them because they require extra uh, extra steps. But if I'm doing like Android applications, I typically use lambdas because they make the project or the code a lot more shorter. And I can pipe a lot of functions together to achieve a certain result. So for this, um, you're gonna create two interfaces. So we're gonna create a functional interface. So, so interface, and I'm gonna call this one function. And this is gonna go ahead and take in function and a parameter I'm gonna pass this as n All right this is gonna generate the prime numbers and to check to see if the numbers are circular primes or not um, next we want to go ahead and generate the sleeving so I'm gonna call this one uh, ratus. All right, and this one, we need to go ahead and return a list of integers here. Okay, so do integer. And let me go ahead and export, import this. All right, so you can just hit out enter if you're using IntelliJ or else you have to type it up manually. And let's call this one save. All right, and we're gonna take an N again because this is, N is gonna be our limit, right? What the range that we want it to go up to. And to make it easier, I wouldn't write extra um, functions in this class. I'm just gonna go ahead and use main to build everything up. So I'm gonna create main, all right? And let me make this a little bigger. So what we need to do is we need to define um, the function in our function interface, right? So. What this is going to do is that, well, we have an interface, we need to provide it with some implementation, all right? And we can provide multiple implementation based on exactly what we want to do. So we have a function that takes n, int n, and returns a Boolean, all right? So let's go ahead and generate, to, let's figure out if a number is prime or not. So we can say a function uh, prime, right, is going to equal taking the parameter n, and now we need to go ahead and build the body for that. So we're going to say if right n is less than 2, then we're going to go ahead and return false. Um, next, what we need to do is 
create a counter. So I'm going to say encounter is going to equal to zero. You can use a list if you want. Um, it's up to you. And then we need to go ahead and get the limit. So we're going to say uh, final int limit, which is going to be pretty much the uh, the lower bound devices that we want to check against. Most of the time, we just want to check against uh, a one right device in the lower bound to see if it's actually not prime that's all that's required else everything in between that is not going to be a divisor so that's typically going to be the uh cassette math that square root of n right so you guys have seen this multiple time i'm just redoing this um and then we need to go ahead and create a loop do int div is going to equal to 2 um, div is less than or equal to the limit and uh, div plus plus I'm going to say if right um, n mod div is equal equal to 0 then we're going to increment the counter so I'm going to do counter plus plus and we're going to say that uh, if Right, the uh, counter is equal equal to one. Then we can go ahead and return false. That means that the number is not prime. And if it passes the for loop, then it's a prime number. So we can go ahead and return true. And we just need to go ahead and close this. Now we want to figure out if a number is a circular prime or not. So we can actually go ahead and reuse our interface here because all we need to do is take in an int and tell it if it's circular or not. So, how do we do this? Well, you can just say um, function, all right, and give the name, let's call this one circular. It's gonna equal to, and we're gonna take an n, right? So we don't have to pass in a type here. Uh, it already knows exactly what type um, we're inferring. And I'm gonna close this here. So how do you figure out if a number is circular or not? Um, how do you rotate a number? Well, you need some math and um, yeah, pretty much need some math. All right, so how do we get this done? Well, we need to figure out if the numbers that we're rotating are, actu are actually prime, right? And then we need to figure out how to actually get the rotations. So what we need to do is get the number of digits in that number. And the easier way to do that is just to get um, the uh, integer, right? dot to string pass in n and then just get the length of that and we're going to subtract one the reason is because well to actually do this you either have to use a math dot log base 10 or you can use the power and let's say there are two numbers right and you and they're base 10 if you get the power of that this number is actually uh 73 all right or 37 and if you um do 10 squared well, you're going to get 100, and that's three digits, not two digits. So you're going to try to rotate three digits instead of two digits. However, if you just get 10, then you're in the range of two digits, and you can easily get, right, 73 from the rotation. So what we need to do is we need to make a copy of n. The reason is because we need to know exactly when the rotation needs to end, because if we rotate a number until the number becomes itself again and that number is all, all prime, then we know that the number is circular. If it exits and it's not prime, then we know that it's not circular, all right? So we're gonna say a while, right? And then we need to go ahead and use our prime and then call that function, all right? And we're gonna pass in CP. Uh, this sounds weird, but there are other ways that we can actually um, do this depending on how we decide to go ahead and pipe our prime implementation. So what we need to do is we need to get the remainder, and this is going to be uh, CP, right, mod 10. And then we need to go ahead and actually divide. So div is going to equal um, CP, right, divided by 10. All right, and now we need to go ahead and rotate. So this is going to equal... Uh, int, right, and we're going to do uh, math dot and then power, and we're going to do the base, which is 10, and then we want to go ahead and pass in the digits, okay? 
Then we're going to go ahead and multiply that by the remainder. And then we're going to add the div there. And that should rotate the number. So how do we end this? Well, eventually this is going to go back up and check all the rotation to see if that it's prime, right? So the other way it's going to exit this function is either if the number is not prime or if all the numbers are prime. So we need to say if cp right is equal equal to n, then we need to go ahead and return true. Um, if it exits, then we need to go ahead and return false. And we're done here. So now we need to go ahead and generate our prime number range. So let's go ahead and implement an error toss. And let's call this error toss. I'm going to take in an int. Why do I keep passing that in? Uh, n. All right. And then we're going to do the body. And let's close that down. All right, so what we're gonna need is we need a Boolean array, and I'm gonna call this a detector because that's pretty much what it does is it detects, uh, spell that right, it detects primes. So detector is gonna equal to new uh, Boolean, and it's gonna be n plus one. I wanna generate all the primes all the way to the end, okay? You can just put n if you want. It's up to how you want to implement it. Next, I want to get all of the primes that I find. It's going to be an integer, and I'm just going to call this one primes. It's going to equal to new array list. All right, and then we need to make sure that we fill in the array, right, uh, with. Uh, true is because initially we're going to assume that all the numbers are prime and then after that we're going to go ahead and rule them out and this is useful after that if you just want to return the array and then see you know which parts are false and which parts are true but I'm doing an extra step here by um, not returning the actual array but returning a list of the primes all right that kind of saves some space and going over the array one more time um, so at least just see how the implementation works, all right? Uh, we're gonna pass in the detector and we're gonna make sure everything's true. And what we can do is we can do the initial detector zero to be false because it's not gonna be prime, all right? And next, we wanna go ahead and create a, a for loop. I'm gonna do int i equals to two. i is less than the detector dot length and do uh, i plus plus all right so now that we have this how do we know that the number is prime well we can say that if right um detector right um i minus one if that is true then we want to go ahead and cross out all the multiples of it but before that Let's go ahead and do um, primes, right, dot add i. So I'm just going to go ahead and collect this here, okay? All right, and then now we need to go ahead and cross it out. So I'm going to say for uh, int j, it's going to equal, right, uh, 2 times i, because that's going to be the multiples of that. Um, j is less than detector that length, all right, I'm gonna do j, right, plus equal to i, put one, all right, and then we need to go ahead and convert those to false, so we're gonna say detector, all right, j minus one is gonna equal to false, and we're pretty much done here, all right, so all we have to do now is um, return the prime. So I'm going to go return primes. All right. So we're pretty much done with this. Uh, we're in main right now, right? And we already have um, we have a we have a way of detecting of detecting primes and returning a list of those primes. And then we have the circular um, function, right? to actually um, check to see the number is prime or not. Okay, 
So what can we do here? Well, we can use the um, parallel stream that's uh, that's built in into into Java 1.8 or Java 10 or 11, right? And we can just do a long, right? Circular uh, primes. It's gonna equal, and then we're gonna do um, eratos, right? Um, dot, and then we're gonna pass in not this, but eratos. So we're gonna do eratos uh, sleeve. All right, and then we want to go all the way. So it's going to be less than 1 million. So we can pass in 99, all right? And then we want to go ahead and do the, uh, let's do a parallel stream. And let's, um, and I can see that I am in the body of this and I should be outside. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take this out and paste this out here, all right? Okay, so once we're in there, uh, we can go ahead and filter, all right? So how do we want to filter? Well, the filter takes in the predicate, which is a condition that we want, it, we want, that we want to be met, okay? And our predicate to see if um, the number is circular or not. So what we can do is we can pass in circular, and you can do a shorthand form here, all right? And pass in function, all right? So if that is circular, uh, all we have to do is just count it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do dot count. All right, and that's it. And we're almost done here. So all we have to do next is just do SRT and do uh, circular primes. And let's go ahead and run this. And you should get 55 for all of the circular primes, um, less than 1 million. All right, guys, this is it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys learned something new. If you like the video, please give me a thumb up and a like. If you have any suggestions, please leave it down in the comment section below and I will respond as soon as I can. See you guys. Bye-bye.